my line uh, talking to the guy who wanted to pass from train to train, and, and I said, you can't, no, you can't go there. You can't go there, chewing gum. You know? said, Why can't I? And I, and I, I have my gun in my, I think I, as I recall, in my coat. And I said, because I'll shoot your peepee -pee off. The word peepee, -pee, under those circumstances, is funny. It's just basic comedy. Straight face, aha. Uh -huh. And I have the, the barrel of the gun in my coat right at his crotch. Because I'll shoot your peepee -pee off, that's all. And that made it very sinister. Suppose I do anyway. And I'll shoot your peepee -pee off. actor. I said, all right, this, this sounds like a good story. Said, hijacking of a subway? That's absurd. <laughs> Nobody was hijacking anything. <laughs> and of course, the cast was exceptional. Walter Matthau, Robert Shaw, Martin Bolson, Earl Hindman. Uh, it, 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 it was an exceptional cast. And all the other supporting players. Um, and it's a job. I'm a working actor. And it's in Brooklyn. I live in Manhattan. Back then, that wasn't far away. I got on the subway and, and went to Brooklyn somehow. Now I wouldn't think of it. Oh, car and driver, please. <laughs> I'll lose my way. <laughs> no, I'll get out of here. So it, uh, it was a, a, a slam dunk. And of course, the wonderful director, Joseph Sargent. Good guy. He survived the Battle of the Bulge, by the way. It was terrific. I went in for the interview. Just an interview. Sat across the table, and we chatted about this, about that, about food, about Italy, about Spain, history. Never mentioned the war, by the way. He just sat there and says, OK. So we start so and so and so and so. Are you ready? Are you up for that? Are you, is that good for you? I said, yes, it's fine. <laughs> is it good for me? Does Pinocchio have wooden buttons? You know. <laughs> I thought I went back home as a baby. I thought, yeah, I have a movie. <laughs> I got this terrific movie with people. That was it for him. No jumping through the hoops. So that was Joseph Sargent in a nutshell. A mensch, a gentleman who knew how to snap the whip when he had to snap it. And he had some... Um, some people with temperament, you know. Well, Mr. Shaw was not uh, a walk in the park. He was super smart, and he, 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 and, he, and he tested you often. He tested whether you knew what you were doing. What is it that you mean? What do you mean? Tell me exactly what you mean. Huh? And you, huh, you'd have to back off a little bit. But uh, Joe was not intimidated by anybody. He knew how to deflect and go and He says, I'm the boss. No matter what you say, I, this is the way it is. So. Uh, he was terrific. Mr. Gray. Hey, you don't think they're finished out there, do you? I approached him as a guy who had a job to do. That's all. I didn't think of him as a bad guy. Let's get, the, let's get through this, and um, let's make sure he's not a sneering villain. It's the way he behaves that shows, you know, the, the psychosis, right? A man, who is it? Uh, Samuel, John, man can, Samuel Johnson said, a man can smile and smile and smile and still be a thief. You know? So he was an easygoing guy, but there was a button that you pressed. And then, you know, that's it. And then, of course, the costume took care of it. <laughs> it's terrible. I was hoping that they'd keep one scene that was, that was uh, hard to do, but that's part of the fun of being a bad guy. You can do some bad things that's not part of your nature. When I hit the black guy, you know, and, and, and I, I had to use the N-word, right? Yeah. Shut your mouth, nigga. <laughs> and bango in the, in the mouth. And I said, oh, man, I can't do that. And the actor said, come on, man, it's a movie. We're actors. <laughs> I said, oh, goodness sakes. That was a tough one. Um, there, were, there were a couple of other scenes where he, um, my character blurts out stuff that uh, inappropriate. Um, I don't quite remember. I, I think there was, there was so much back and forth with the guns and the fighting, but it was character-based. Those four guys were indelible. Your attention, please. Now then, you'll all remain seated. Anybody who tries to rise is going to get shot. New York was on its knees for uh, quite a few reasons. Uh, fiscally, it was, uh, it, it was in great, great stress. Uh, uh, the petty... Uh, crime and the quality of life was uh, was almost demoralizing. 
It, it was before they had, had decided to shift, they meaning the, uh, uh, the New York and the, and the police, decided to shift their focus from the big crime problems that they were dealing with uh, to, the, to the street quality of life issues, the broken windows issues, they called it. Um, it was before that, just before that, that turned. So New York was in trouble. Also, it was graffiti smeared, which was just a symptom of what New York was going through. Everything was graffitied. Nothing, it, nothing was sacred. No space was, uns uh, was sacred. It was, a, it, <laughs> it was a canvas for the graffiti artists. That's what they call themselves. And some were quite, quite exceptional, quite wonderful. Um, <laughs> my son, as a matter of fact, was, uh, was in the periphery of that, uh, of, that, of, that, uh, of that circle. So that was New York then. It was gritty. It was tough. Uh, it was crime-ridden, and, uh, and the movie reflected that. Holy shit. One interesting piece of trivia when you watch the movie. We were shooting in an abandoned subway station. The subway station had been created for some politician because he wanted, to, <laughs> he wanted a subway station close to the house. <laughs> and they did that. You know, Tammany Hall, these guys. You know. They, could, they can do all that stuff. They did that. Uh, so we had this wonderful subway station to ourselves. We didn't have to wait for crowds. It was completely controllable. It was a wonderful venue for it. Only one thing. The MTA said, you can use the subway station, uh, <laughs> but no graffiti. Not one ounce, not speck of graffiti. What? That wasn't New York. That was part of New York. That was the other character. That's what makes it, this movie so important and so fetching is New York City in the 70s, in the mid-70s. No graffiti. So when the camera goes above ground, when you leave the subway, there it is, graffiti smeared. In the subway, it's pristine. It's antiseptic. And that's, that's amusing. Very few people catch that. That train was a moving train. They could put in the platform and zip it through. So they could, they could zip that through the tracks, back and forth, back and forth. That's how they got that motion. So that was our baby. No one got in the way. There, were not, there, was, no, there was no other sound, no ambient noise. Uh, there were the usual, of course, the very, very large New York rats with beautiful coats, by the way. They were the size of cats. You know, after a while, you said, okay, they are, they're, they're, get them out of here. <laughs> Big deal. You know, no one said, eek, it's a rat. It's a rat. They didn't come on the subway. They knew better. You know what I mean? Come on. Drills, we do it by the numbers. Hats. Oh, drills and numbers. Oh, this is all chicken shit. Why don't we just do it? We shot long days, cold, March. It, uh, uh, we, they were um, improvised dressing rooms. We didn't have a top, it just had sides. <laughs> Plywood and a cot. <laughs> a, little, a little heater. That was about it. It's New York in the 70s, man. But the, everyone had chops. The cinematographers, the director, the writers, you know, the, the people, the, the crew was terrific. Terrific, I think uh, we had Fast Eddie on the crew, famous gaffer. Uh, no one knew his real name. If you wanted somebody done, you call Fast Eddie. <laughs> he did it quickly. Somehow he had the right piece of something. He could fix anything with a bobby pin and, 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 and gaffer's tape. Fast Eddie. They don't make Fast Eddies anymore. Come on, I got it. I got it. Don't worry about it. It's done. What? What's wrong? Come on, moving on. <laughs> Anything wrong? One or more time. How much more? Just ten minutes. Guess <clears throat> I can't hurt anybody. I didn't he was a pussycat. He just was a, a World War II vet who was a theater guy. Wonderful actor. But he had soul. Marty was, was all feeling. Where, where Shaw was one guy, Marty was the opposite, you know? You know he was an egalitarian, he was a, a real um, all-inclusive fellow, funny as hell, bright as can be, and I'm sorry that he, he left us so soon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel pain too much. How many shots? Just one. The rest was me, and then they answered. Earl was a sweet man, and he was very much like the character. Quiet, big, strong, and uh, still waters run deep with Earl. Didn't get to know Earl too much. All I know is he was a gentleman. That was enough for me. And he was, when you needed him, boom, Earl was right there. Is Mr. Hype, hello, there he is right there. Hello, stay close, pal. You know, he was a professional, you know, but he was easy to be with.
This is Garber, go ahead. I'm going to give you three specific instructions. Each one is to be followed precisely. Is that clear? So far. Walter Matho, piece of New York work. I, he was working on the platform that day. We had a chat. I was about to light a cigar. I love cigars. I come from a tradition of cigars. And he also smoked cigars at one time. Little did I know he had recently stopped. And I was about to light my cigar. He looks down, he's a tall fellow. I said, you know, you're going to light that, pal? You thinking of lighting that? I said, I, yes, it, um, it did cross my mind. I was about to light it. He said, I said, well, you got five minutes? So, shoot, of course. All right, here's my pitch. <laughs> he gave me the pitch as to what happens to the cigar. He says, you know, why are you smoking cigars? Well, they're this, they're, they're delicious, and they're, um, uh, you, and I, yeah, I don't inhale. No one inhales cigars. You've got to be crazy to inhale a cigar. It's the flavor. He says, ah, oh, yeah? All right. Baloney. That smoke goes up the soft palate, still goes into the cranium, pal. And he gave this whole pitch on what tobacco does to the lungs, to the brain, to the vein, to the vomit. And then at the end, I said, hmm, you still want to smoke that cigar? I think I just stopped him. Next stop, Grand Central. My son came to visit with his friends one time. He says, okay, pal, you'd be there about one, such and such a time. And we were setting up a shot, and as we were setting up a shot, so I said, your son is here with a couple of his friends. And I said, hi, son. Hey, 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 pop. I'll be right with you. And they come in, the, the doors open, and there was a space between the platform and the train about this wide. So we all said, watch out for the platform. We would put a little plank over it. He didn't see the space. <laughs> And he fell right in, almost fell into the tracks. And they, the, the crew guys got him just in time. And he was up to here, just about to slip into the damn tracks, man. And they pried him up like a snail. Blah, blah. I said, thanks for visiting, man. <laughs> it, was, it was my son who almost fell into the tracks. Uh. Mr. Gray, would you be good enough to give that gun to Mr. Brown, please? No, this ain't going to go nowhere. It isn't going to stay with me. What made the movie was that you got involved with the characters. You know, there was no digital this and special effects that. The movie covered a broad base uh, of, of New York life there. It got under the skin. That's why it's become what it's become, unbeknownst to me. I've been doing this 55 years and I'm very, very fortunate. I'm a very lucky man. I've been working for 55 years. But prior to that, of course, I was doing a lot of stage. I think I had done one or two movies before that. Two or three, perhaps. That's about it. I wanted to do stage. I was a theater actor. You could make a living then. So it impacted me. It, it, uh, I just proceeded from there. It made quite a splash at first, you know. They were long, it was long awaited and so on and so forth. A couple of days later, I went to my local bank, which is literally around the corner, just around the corner. It was um, Manufacturers Hanover Trust. Now, that's the name of a bank, right? That's what a bank should sound like. Uh, and uh, I walk in. I've been going there since I was a kid with my father. Uh, hiya, Charlie. Hiya, Jamie. And it was a new teller. Whatever the transaction was, she looks at the thing, looks at me, looks at the thing, looks at me, says, excuse me. Closes the window. What the? Walks off, and I see her talk to the manager. The manager looks at me, looks at me, and, she, and, she, and the manager starts laughing. And you can hear. The lady came back. Sorry, sir. Fine. So what was that about? All right. She saw Pelham one, two, three the night before. She didn't trust me. <laughs> so I think that that made an impact on me. I said, hmm, this is a good note, man. I think I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be hitting this ball for a while. <laughs>